and welcome to our second iteration of our Power BI webinar series. My name is Qasim Al Rafi, and I will be the webinar giver for the for the evening here. We will be going over data manipulation um, in regards to Power BI. Obviously, we will we will start with a bit of um, front end navigation just to get everyone accustomed to how Power BI works. But if you are new to Power BI, I do highly suggest that you watch our previous video on navigation and configuration, and then everything should be pieced together pretty smoothly here. Um, as always, <coughs> excuse me, as always at the end of the video, um, there will be a Q&A session. Uh, I do not believe your mics would work. If they do, feel free to try them. But there is a QA panel um, in Teams. If you just send a message there, uh, Tom Makarov is moderating the meeting and he'll be able to make sure that I see um, the questions as they come. Cool. So without further ado, let's begin. So this is a very simple Power BI. Um, it's just a simple view and this is part of our COVID package. And as you can tell, just a very simple dashboard. And just to get into some of the front end navigation really quickly here, much like other Microsoft products, you have the tabs up here, home, insert modeling, just like Excel and Word, where each of them have a different subsect of, uh, of buttons and functions. Whereas the home tab, you have more of the commonly used um, functions, the insert tab, more of the visual stuff, modeling, more of the actual backend navigation, and so on and so forth. You have your filters, your visuals, and your fields and obviously your main report pane, and then just like Excel as well, you can have different sheets. You can rename rename them here, duplicate, delete. Uh, anything really front end is done here. Now, I'm not gonna go over too too much because that was the last video, so feel free to check our YouTube videos, our YouTube channel for all the webinars that we are putting out. Then you have the data pane, which allows you just to see the, the data in a, in a snippet. Now all the data is here, so nothing you do, um, just full screen this, nothing you do in this section will actually affect your data unless you are um, changing like the data type or the summarization. But for the most part, any filters or any slices you're adding onto this don't really affect your source data. And we'll get into the source data in a bit. But yeah, so this you're able to just click this, drag down, select which employee you want, and so on and so forth. Now I'm not going to go into too much, like I said before, our other video is there. If you guys do have questions on front end, if there is time at the end of the video, feel free to message and we feel free to ask a question and I'll definitely go over it should time permit. And finally, the relationships pane. Now this is where <laughs> The magic of Power BI happens, and you have to make sure that this is properly set up for any um, any of your visuals to work. So what I mean by that is if you are trying to connect the forms table, for example, to the form business unit, which doesn't have a relationship, nothing will happen when you connect these two in Power BI. There has to be a relationship between the two for there to be any sort of visual magic happening. Now, automatically, Power BI does try its best to auto place uh, fields together. Now, this would work in most situations. Sometimes it actually is for the worst. Um, instead of, for example, prioritizing form tasks, it might prioritize form task status code instead. So you have to really, before you get into the visual of things, go through this and make sure that everything you need is set up properly. So that's sort of the front end navigation. Very quick, very simple. Like I said, if you guys have any questions, feel free to message QA, message our support email, or check out the previous video in, uh, on our YouTube channel. So today's webinar is going to be mainly about this transform data button. It might be called edit queries, um, depending on what version of Power BI you're running. I'm running the newest and greatest, so it says transform data. So let's get into it. A pop-up will appear and 
this is a bit more, this is a, very similar to the data data pane and the other front end navigation with just a lot more features. So automatically you can tell that the tabs are still here, but there are new functions, right? So I'll quickly go over some of the functions that you will use. Now, as currently not every um, field that I want out of my iTrack system is properly pulled out. So if I do go to recent sources, you click more. Fortunately, this is a new computer, but you would see your your most recent sources here. So let's say you have employees and form employees, but you wanted to extract the um, form people table, for example. You would click recent sources, go here, click your dynamics tab, your OData or your SQL, and then pull out the tables you need. Now let's say this is your first time using your data. You would actually click new source, and I mentioned this in the previous video. You click SQL, text, Excel, whatever you want. If you can't find it in these in here, you'd go to more, and then a pop-up will open up with more options on how to connect your data. And then this last one would be enter data. So just as an example, and I'll show you what I did for the enter data. Um, the status code form task. So if you are pulling out the metadata of your iTrack um, system, you may seem you may see some of these values like five seven nine nine five zero zero four, just these random GUIs or these random uh, option sets that are attached to the actual text. Now, unfortunately, if the we do have a global option metaset table, um, but depending on what version you want, this may not be accessible to you. So, for any of our SQL clients, this should be available. Um, but if you are an OData or using CRM's OData, doesn't always work. So, a way I get around that is I'll press Enter Data. And you're actually able to just to create a very pseudo uh, pseudo table. This doesn't work if you're inputting 100, 100 rows, but if it's something as simple as saying test value is equal to Tom, for example, and then employee option set is equal to one. And then, for example, Darren is equal to two. So now when you open this, you now have you now have a new table that will appear. I think I just called mine table. It's just loading over here, and then you're able to connect this to your other main tables, and then just do a quick lookup, or you can actually merge the tables together. And I'll get into how to do that. That way, whenever you see this one or two, you can actually just expand it. So instead of seeing one and two, you now see Tom and Darren, um, because you're trying to make it as visual as possible, as easy for the front end people to to work with. So if you do have any of these random GUIDs, it's not the best. You have your data source settings. You have to make sure that you're connecting to your data properly. All right, so if I click here, should tell me. If I click change source, you're able to change the, the URL if you didn't do it correctly. You're able to edit your permissions to see what permission you're running. So if you're using SQL, um, you'd never want to use organizational account. You mainly want to use, I believe it's basic, but if you are using a CRM OData feed or just a regular OData feed, you'd use organizational and so on and so forth. And then this refresh preview is another um, button you'd use a lot. I'm not going to click it because it might take a while, but this is just making sure your data is up to date. So for example, let's say I know the forms table um, isn't properly used and you're running on an older laptop or an older computer. Obviously the forms is run a lot, but just an example, you can actually remove this by saying include and report refresh. So if you know that this table is taking a long time to refresh your entire data set and you only changed, for example, one form type, by clicking this include and report refresh and then pressing refresh again, you're actually saving yourself time and bandwidth um, and processing power by not refreshing this forms table. So something to know as your data set properly grows. Reset that. I'll get into the advanced editor at the very end, but that's where the bread and butter of uh, of Power BI happens. And then all of these things, uh, choose columns, remove rows, so on and so forth, can be done just right clicking these columns. So whether you prefer to use the home tab or just right clicking the column header, it's up to you. Um, but I'll go over through here just because it's easier to visualize. So you can choose your columns and actually a pop-up will appear saying uh, which columns you want to choose. So you can only say you only want SSN and SIN. You click OK. 
You'll see here that on the applied steps on the right side, it said remove other columns. And then here it says iTrack send and iTrack SSN. So any, anything you do regarding this table will appear on this right side over here. Now, let's say you made a mistake and you uh, accidentally added a step. You can actually just delete it using this X over here. Or let's say you forgot one out of the one of the one out of the three tables. So let's say I wanted SS, SIN, SSN, and another table. Instead of deleting the query and doing it over again, you can just click this little gear icon. And this gear icon is going to be your best friend while working with data manipulation. So you click it. Say I want this column as well. Click OK. And then in a second it should populate. Now these are the applied steps that happen to this specific table. So you have source, this is just your source, and it just goes on and everything, every time you make an addition to it or make a change to it, it will actually apply here. So now let's say I'm in this company ID step, so I'm in the third step out of the fifth step, and I remove this column for example, right? So you'll automatically get a pop-up warning saying, um, you're not following the exact step order, so you, you you're pushing in a you're pushing in a, a step that might make, break your query, query. Sorry, so you're gonna obviously ignore it because you think you know what you're doing, <coughs> and it might work while you're going down the list. But once you get to this removed other columns, an error pops up because you removed this birthday publication column earlier. So just you have to be very mindful of the steps you're doing and you have to make sure that you are doing them in a proper order. Now just automatically getting rid of this step, you get another pop up and then the query should load once it's finished loading. So that's the generic idea behind applied steps and some of the uh, processes up here. The rest of them are very, very self-explanatory, right? Keep top rows, keep bottom rows. And if you have played around with power pivot, um, in Excel, very similar to that as well. You have your sort. Now, this is something I find myself using very often as well, this uh, split column. And instead of showing you guys blank data, I'm gonna, I populated a generic um, Excel sheet. Now, the split column is used a lot, especially when you have, um, when you're working with your risk matrices, when you're working with um, addresses, locations, if you really want to make sure that Let's say, for example, in one column you had Canada, Calgary, and you wanted those to become two separate columns. That's what the split column does. You can split by delimiter, which is like a, a period, a colon, a semicolon, uh, split by number of characters. So if you know that, um, for example, before every valuable piece of data, there's the word error beside it, you can just say, I want to split by three number of characters and so on and so forth. So it is very, it was very simple. I'll show you guys this quick example. So if I click number of characters and I say I want to split by three, you can either split once. So what it will do, it will count one, two, and then three, and then split over there as far right. So one, two, three from the right side, or three going on forward. All right, so I'll just go once just for simplicity's sake. And now you see that the, the every, after every third character, it splits the column into two. So something you have to be very mindful of, especially if working with eye track data, this is going to be your best friend. Um, something else to mention is by changing your data type, you can either do this up here or through this little letter box at the top left. So by clicking it, and these are all text at the end of the day. But if let's say you want to change it to number, even though it won't work, um, you're able to change it anyway. So let's say you add a new step. It might give you an error because it obviously can't read text to data or text to, to number, sorry. So you see the error. Second you see an error, just pop back out. Finally, the last major data manipulation tool in this home tab would be this replace values. Um, I find myself using this very often um, if I'm trying to group up employees by a specific name. So if I'm trying to just break off all my developers together, all my consultants together, all my managers together. I'll just, it's very tedious, unfortunately. I'll click replace values. <coughs> and every time I see the word gov, for example, I want to change that to, um, change it to Tom, for example, because he's to developers. Right, you click OK. 
And then every time it'll run through the entire column here. Every time it sees the word gov, change it to developers. So this helps a lot when you are trying to break off um, multiple values into a subset of values within, within that same column. Uh, I find it best practice to actually just duplicate this column first and then do it. That way you're not losing any data. You're not having to go back and forth between steps to see what you actually changed. So that's the mainly for the home table. We'll get into merge and append in a second. Now the transform table, as I mentioned before, the home tab um, has a lot of the most commonly used functions. The transform tab is where it really gets into data manipulation. So um, I'm not, I don't know what to get into specifically here because there is a lot. I already mentioned replace values, data type, um, but some things I do want to actually mention are this format one over here. So let's say this works best with iTrack um, when you're dealing with some text fields. Now, let's say people are typing on a iPad. They might accidentally capitalize some letters or they might not capitalize any letters. And then when you're going to, to filter, you're going to slice by those, by those values, you do want to make sure that everything is the same. Or even if you want to count by a certain value of how many times the word incident was appeared in the text, for example. It's always best to just either capitalize these for each word or just uppercase the entire entire set. All right, so by pressing capitalize each word, obviously it's already finished here, so I'll use the segment point two. It goes and it'll just start by every before every space, and I'll just give you a capital letter before every space. It's making sure your data is clean and easy to use, because oftentimes I do find that text values especially are very, uh, I, 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 I'm properly cleaned, sorry. Okay, from there you have transposing. This is very similar to um, power pivot. If you want to treat the rows as columns and columns as rows, I'm not going to do it because it might take a while. Um, you don't really find yourself doing this too often with uh, your eye track system. Um, and then I'll finally go into the time section. Now this is more for our clients who aren't in Canada and Calgary or Alberta, and they are in a different time, time zone. If you are getting your dynamics data, or getting your eye track data, and you find that your time isn't set to your local, you'd actually just find a timetable. So it's or a time column. Sorry. So I'm trying to find one here. If not, so for example, this occurred date, for example, it's saying that it happened on 12 a.m. If you think that's wrong, you can click time and you can change it um, by time only. But I highly suggest going local time. That way you're making sure that the data that does come through was changed and it's properly accorded. Take a second to run. Okay, while, this, the, the, while this is happening in the background, so if I edit the forms table, I am still able to go to other tables while this is happening. So the last thing I want to show you guys in terms of data manipulation is the, probably the most um, the most commonly used function with iTrack are these merge and append queries. Okay, so I'll go to form tasks here. So as you can see here, if I go all the way to the right and I find this button called state code, and data does look like this most of the time. So the state code has one zero 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 zero. Now this doesn't do much for me. I do want to see this by text. And if I go to status code here, oh sorry, status code, not state code. There's two of them. So if I find status code, just like I said, you have to dig through a lot of data. So if you are playing, you won't have this many columns if you are in SQL. Um, if you are in our, our, our cloud clients, this is the CRM metadata, so it's going to look a lot messier. So if you're seeing a lot of nulls or a lot of just GUIs that you don't really want, it will be cleaned up if you are in cloud, so don't worry about that. So I'll try to find the status code one. If not, I'll just explain it anyways. OK, so as you can see, I found the four status code option sets that come through alongside their names. So draft, in progress, requested, and completed. So if I go back to form tasks and I click and merge queries, I want those uh, draft, completed, requested to take place instead of um, the, the 5799 or the 0 or the 1 or the 2. So I'll click here. You'll click the column you want to merge with. So for me, it was status code form task values. You do have to sift through your entire um, 
your entire data set, unfortunately, to find status code. So right there, click it, you click the status code as well. I always use left outer, and what that does, it says, okay, whenever um, you take all the columns from the first table, and you'll only take the matching from the second. If you want to do a right outer, it all works the same way, it works the opposite way, but for the most part, I want to merge into form tasks. Now, the error I'm getting here is select columns of the same type. So unfortunately, when the data, come th data came through, um, you can see here that the status code is a number value, which is correct, but the status code here is a text, so that will never work. So you do have to go back. There's a lot of going back and forth with that, especially changing the data type to a whole number. Then going back into form tasks, merge queries. And then you have to find status code again. Let's see if I remember where it was. State code, status code. Status code form task. Click it again. It'll give you an estimated match. So you see six of six are, are comparable. If you see five of six or four of six, it's still okay. But just keep in mind that your data might not merge properly. You hit OK, the queries will merge together. And you see here that it became a table. Now what this table does is these two little arrows that separate from each other, you actually click on them and you can say, okay, I don't want the status code again because that, that column already exists in this table. You'll get rid of it. I usually get rid of this original column name as prefix, as long as your column names are named accordingly. You'll press okay. And then you see that if the status code was five, seven or whatever it was, it now became completed. So when you go into your visuals, instead of trying to go to status code and then linking that to the external table, you can link it with the, uh, with the, what should we call it? With the internal table, sorry. Finally, this append queries button. I don't really use this too often with Power BI or with iTrack because it does um, mess up your, mess up your data quite a bit. But what it does is it goes from top to bottom. So right now I have six rows here. And let's say I want to append status code form task values to it instead of merging it. This actually causes a pretty big issue. Because what it does is it found the, the two tables that were linked together. So as you can see here, the status code name, it saw that that column was the same as the other column. And all the other ones will be null because they don't exist in the other table. But when I go to state code or status code, sorry, you can see that those those values are also here. So I never suggest appending queries unless you're using static worksheets that are happening over time. So if you're trying to see how many incidents were um, submitted in March, for example, and then submitted into um, April and you, sub, you append the two Excel sheets together, that's fine. But when it comes to your actual data set of iTrack, I do not suggest you do this. A lot of this is just playing around and looking at the Power BI forums. Um, I highly suggest going through them because if you've had that question, chances are somebody else has that question and it's already been answered. So if you are new to Power BI, research is going to be your best friend. And then if you do have any questions regarding iTrack specifically, you can always message support at Neosystems and we're more than welcome to help you. And the last little piece I want to go over when it comes to uh, the data manipulation is this advanced editor. Now, as I mentioned before, you have all these applied steps. So it starts at source and it ends at expanded status code. When I click advanced editor, and this language is used is called M. So if you are a bit of uh, a programmer, it's very simple. Uh, it's a very simple language, but as you can see, it started at source and it ended with expanded status code. Now, this is a good way to, especially if you're removing columns or adding columns, it's a good way to, to sift through and try to figure out what exactly is happening, right? So you can see here it says table renamed columns. You're renaming um, owning user assigned to to assign to. Now that takes a lot of time to get used to, but the second you get it, you become a whole different um, animal when it comes to Power BI. Um, you can do JSON in this in this editor. You can do so much with this editor, but if you don't want to deal with the developer or the 
programming side, quote unquote, aspect of Power BI, um, these functions at the top of the heading work just as well. Finally, you want to close and apply your savings or your, your edits. Now, the bigger your data set, the longer this will unfortunately take. So if you are, let's say you are at a company and you're dedicated to a power, you're dedicated Power BI developer, I highly suggest you ask for a more powerful machine because I've had clients where I've had to refresh their data and it's taken, um, it's taken three hours to refresh their data. Whereas when, I'm, when I go home and I'm working on my home computer, which is a bit more beefy, it takes about 10, 20 minutes. So if you do want to save time and be productive, I highly suggest you go into your managers and saying, hey, what I'm doing takes a lot of processing power. I do need a better machine. And if there are any errors with your query, you'll get them in this um, in this little pop-up here. Now, unfortunately, um, if an error does occur, you won't see the populated data in the visuals. You actually have to go back into the transform data, the advanced editor section, and find the error and fix it. It's honestly, that's just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the advanced editor. It does take a lot of time to get used to it. Now, nothing is really like extremely advanced, unfortunately. You can't really break your data set unless you're really appending or merging the wrong tables together. So a lot of it is just getting in there, playing around, looking through the forums to see what you need to do. Um, and if you guys do have any questions, like I said earlier, feel free to message support at neosystems.com um, for any advice. Now that is the end of the webinar. Uh, sorry if that seemed a bit rushed. There was just a, there's a lot to go through um, over the 30 minutes. Uh, we may do a part two of Advanced Editor, or we might go into a bit more iTrack specific Power BI in the near future. So. Uh, keep an eye on that and make sure you're staying up to date with our newsletters to see which webinars are coming up or through our website, neosystems.com slash webinars. Uh, so QA is open. If you guys do have any questions, feel free to message me in the Q&A panel and I'll wait until any messages come. So while I'm waiting for QA to come in, something I want to mention is that as I changed earlier the employees table, as you can see now, the employees table now only has these three columns, as well as form tasks will only will now have that extra status code name. So if you want to make sure the queries did load correctly, I suggest going to this data pane here and seeing what was changed. So that's all for this demonstration. I'll be waiting for QA up until the top of the hour. So at three o'clock, the live event will be ending. So if you guys do have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask or message us at support at neosystems.com. And as always, please head over to neosystems.com slash webinars to see which webinars are coming up and how you can stay in the loop with all of the iTrack updates. Thank you and have a great night.